and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a warm morning in Greendale. And there were plenty of letters and parcels for Pat to deliver. Whoops! Oh, sorry. Whatever are you doing with my bike, Pat? I... I just didn't see it. Goodness me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. It's taken a bit of a knock. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. It's all this post to deliver. I didn't see your bike. There's just too much rushing about. Mm, the bike looks all right. I'll pop round when I have a minute. Put this me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. I'd better get a move on. Cheerio. Just the thing for the twins' nasty cold. Not like the stuff we had in the old days when I was a girl. Morning, Doctor. Hello, Pat. Well, I never. Express delivery. Sorry. Can't stop. Bye. Hello and goodbye then, Pat. Pat was soon out in his van, delivering the day's post to the countryside, trying not to hurry. First stop, Ted Glenn's workshop. Who's that tooting? Now then, Pat, what's up? Sorry, Ted, can't stop. In a rush today. Bye! Well, I'll be flummoxed. What's old Pat rushing off like that for? Just when I fancied a good matter. But Pat had no time to stop and matter. There was post to deliver. First, some letters for Greendale Farm. Mrs. Pottage heard him pull up outside. Morning! Morning, Pat. You're just in time for a cup of tea. Very kind of you. Just half a cup, please. You're not telling me there's so much post that you can't stop for a chat. That reminds me. I'll have to find time to call on Miss Hubbard. I ran into her bike this morning. Rushing about. Well, that's what Miss Hubbard said. Hey, is that the right time? I'll have to get a move on. There's a lot to do today. Thanks for the tea. Bye, Mrs. Pottage. Bye, Pat. Outside, Jess wasn't looking too happy. Hey, Jess, what's happened? Oh, my sandwiches. Who's done that? They've eaten the whole lot, rotten things. The sandwich robbers of Greendale strike again. It can't be the hens this time. This is a case for PC Selby. But no time to stop for clues. No sandwiches. And miles away from home.
The next stop was at Thompson Ground. Morning, Dorothy. A letter for you today. Oh, hello, Pat. Thanks. Any news? <laughs> There's news, all right. I bent Miss Hubbard's bike a bit in the village, and someone's nicked my lunch while I was parked at Greendale Farm. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder who could have pinched your sandwiches. But never mind, I've something nice in the oven. There's plenty to spare, so don't you worry. I'm just off to the garden first, then we'll see what we can do. Just come and look at my carrots, the real champions. Oh my! Oh heavens! Oh, it's awful! It's all dug up! Massacrated! What's happened? All the carrots gone. Some just nibbled. Others half chewed. I don't believe it! Who could have done a thing like this? The garden's ruined! Just look at my lovely carrots! What monster has done this? First my sandwiches, now your carrots. <laughs> it must be a very hungry monster. I'm going to ring PC Selby. He'll know what to do. It might be something dangerous. Something... Something big and dreadful. Come out of... I don't know where. Poor old Pat. Dorothy was in such a fluster that she has forgotten all about lunch. Pat and Jess went on their way, feeling more and more hungry. And keeping a lookout for the monster. There was something going on at Granny Dryden's cottage. All the washing had been thrown into the road. What's all this? Oh, Pat, look at me washing. The line's broken and me new sheets are all dirty in the road. And me best pillowcase is gone. I don't know what's happening, but there's been trouble all up the dale. Someone nicked my lunch and all the carrots out of Dorothy Thompson's garden. And now you're washing. It's some beast from the moors, you mark my word. Bye, Granny Dryden. Bye, Pat. Jess was wishing that the beast was a nice fat mouse. He was hungry. And so was Pat. And what's this? I'd recognize that bike anywhere. It's Miss Hubbard's. Oh, Pat. How glad I am to see you. What is it, Miss Hubbard? Have you had an accident? I was on my way home when this thing with hooves and, and an enormous head covered with a white sort of bag came out of the field. It snorted at me and I fell off. It looks as though you've met the beast. That's what I called it. Then it pinched the apples from my basket, so I took a swipe at it with my brolly and jumped the wall. I'll tell PC Selby as soon as I get to the village, so don't worry. Will you be all right now? Oh yes, I'll be fine. Mind how you go, Pat. Cheerio! Do be careful, Pat! There was a registered letter for the Major. Morning, Pat. He was busy in the garden. Morning, Major. A registered letter for you. Look at this, Pat. My best begonia shattered. And I know who did it. A huge monster it was, rampaging all round the gardens with a mysterious white shroud over its head. I must say it has made a mess. I do hear it's the famous beast of Greendale, risen from its lair in the moors. Ah, 
I'll give it Beast of Greendale, making a mess of my gardens. We'll have to hunt the thing down. Get help from the village. Chase it back to... to... from wherever it came from. Hang on. Listen. Bells? At this time of the day? I can't think why. Unless... By Jove! The beast is after the Reverend. And he's calling for help. Come along, Pat. Not a minute to lose. I just hope we're not too late. Whatever is going on? The noise! Morning, Reverend. Glad to see you fit and well. Oh, hello, Major Forbes. And Pat. I am glad you've come. We thought it was you ringing the bell. No, I, I'm not ringing the bell. I mean, how can I be? The bell rope's inside, and I'm out here, oh dear. Right, men? We'd better investigate. Lead the way, Major. Uh, well, I, I think you should go first, Pat. I'll bring up the rear. Off you go. You're next. Uh, but, but why me? Well, it's your church after all. Are you coming with me, Major? Well, uh, no. Bad strategy. No. I'll stay here and secure your line of retreat, what? Off you go, there's a good chap. Nothing to worry about. I don't like this. All he needs to do is to take the bull by the horns. What? Horns? Did you say horns? Hello? I think we found the beast of Greendale. Quick, run! Do be careful, Major. Well, I never fancy finding him here. Here, give over, little devil. I can hardly hear myself think with that bell you've got entangled with. Ouch! That was my foot. Morning, all. Well, I never. What is he doing? Oh, Dad, you've caught her at last. Yes, well, uh, it's a pity it took me so long. Who knows what she's been up to, apart from getting entangled in this bell rope and making a racket. And we all thought it was the Beast of Greendale. Beast of what? <laughs> oh dear me, it's no beast. It's only Lucy's pony. I'll make up for any damage she's done. <laughs> I think you'll have a few gardens to dig and put to rights. We'll all help. Beast of Greendale. Ah, humbug. Bless her. Bye-bye, and thanks, everybody. Yes, bye, everyone. Well, <laughs> I'd rather ride in my van. For one thing, <laughs> it doesn't eat carrots. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.